Welcome to Deep Dark Ross 2. In this video series, um, I'll try to explain things of Ross 2, basically. Uh, and in this video series, I'm going to do a deep dive into the code and how everything works in the simulation that I showed you on uh, the previous video. So in this video, I'm going to just go over the first few files and see how it's structured and we are going to change the world from the default one to the new one uh, one that we want okay it's very simple but it's a good introduction to understand how this is um, structured and how it works and um, if i made myself clear there so let's let's dive in so the objective is to have you launching this world, which is a huge, huge world with our beloved drone here. And this this world is a Joshimite. Um, sorry if I mispronounced that. And as you can see, it's a huge, a vast world uh, for gazebo. Um, so let's dive in. By the way, I'll be following a, a notebook just to be sure that I don't miss anything that, uh, that I want to comment on. So let's have a look. So the first thing you have to do when you open this project is you will have to um, install several things that are not installed in the system. Once you have it, you should be able to launch everything with these commands here. Okay, this is what we did on the previous video. If you didn't see it, go watch it and then come back here. Um, in this first chapter and video, what I'm going to try is to explain this, this script, launch script that we are starting here to have the basic um, drone in ROS2 running, okay? And then we'll go uh, deeper and deeper. But as you'll see in, in a few seconds, it's, it's a total mess of code. It's structured in a way that um, normally uh, simulations in ROS2 are not structured, or at least they don't work like that. Uh, you'll see, you'll see. So first thing is, if you go to the IDE, and you go to the ROS2 workspace, which is here, ROS2 workspace, source, and we'll have a look at the launch files in this case. So for being faster, uh, if you go and search for this package here, you'll see that you have in the launch folder this single drone trajectory, and what it's doing is launching this script as you can see, ROS2 script with a namespace that it's drone one and um, this activated. Okay. Uh, essentially, we're doing this. Okay. If we did it in through the command line, we would do this, and we wouldn't need all this. Okay. Then, if we have a look at this script here. There are a lot of things to talk about, but I've just divided it basically on essentially what we're doing here is launching this, or at least setting up so that we can launch this. Um, what we're doing is, in this case, because we're setting Siddle to, uh, to true, these two nodes are not launched, these two launches are not launched. Uh, and then this one is launched, which is uh, the simulation, basically all this, the simulation uh, simulation systems that we will have a look right now. And then two others, which are the fake joystick and the trajectory publisher, which we won't talk about them in this video, probably in the next or next video, depending on how deep we go in all this this um, this code. Uh, 
So let's have a look at this drone situ, which is in the drone simulation package, which is around here. And here is when it, it starts to get um, meaty, let's say. So um, where, where do we start? Let's have a look here. What we're doing here is executing three things a command line bash script through Python, and then we are starting two nodes, the bridge node and the observer nodes. Yeah. Here, what we're doing is the following. Let me. The first thing is that we are getting this uh, PX4 folder file from this package and uh, this file, which is the simu folder yum. Essentially here we are just putting the path. And in the, inside this simu folder, what we have is a yum data structure, which states where do we have the px4 folder. Where this means that we can put it anywhere we want in our system in theory. And then we have where do we want our logs to be stored again, where anywhere we want in our system. Once we set that, then we have these two variables which are getting essentially what we have in this um, this config, uh, launch parameters, model, and so on. And then, and sorry, and if we have a look at this config, we can have here, here. What we're doing is opening a YAM file. The same that we're doing here, we're opening a YAM file. In this case, this one is the PX4 folder file, which we just saw here, uh, here. And in this one, we are opening another one, which is this single drone params, which is the one that we, we gave the launch. And it's also very simple data, but it could be very much more complex. It's stating the name of the, the drone, the model of the drone, and how many drones. In this case, one. OK, so here we are setting this model to crazy RTPS and this folder to this path. That's it. Then we fill up a bit more data here. We, again, we look for some the path for the models for Gazebo and also the plugins for Gazebo. Once we have that, then we are setting the launching of the, the bridge and the observer that I mentioned previously and the the command line equivalent would be something like this uh, we are launching these nodes with a namespace in this case drone why because we need a bridge and a and observer for each of the drones because this structure is meant for uh, controlling hundreds of drones and also the drone bridge you're giving it the data, the configuration data of the, the model that you stated. So let me have a look here. Here, the get bridge parameters, which uh, get bridge parameters, um, let me, because I get a bit lost in this kind of stuff. There we go. Here we are getting these parameters for the bridge and it depends on the name. If, if it's crazy fly 2 then we get these parameters. So it's very, very light weight drone uh, with a very light uh, thrust and the controller, the PID controller um, values. Okay. We have this, we have that, and then we are setting the command, which the command would be something like this. So the path to the PX4 autopilot, and then blah, 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 and 
to this script that we're going to see right now. And then we are giving some arguments like the model, the number of drones, the world that we want to, to start, where we have the plugins, where we have the models. It's convenient, but it's not the way um, things in ROS and Gazebo should be launched, at least uh, from my perspective, it could be a bit more ROS, ross system. But it's cool, it's, it's good. It's complex, but effective at least. So let's have a look at this script, which is a bash script. And we are going to have a look at only where we are loading the worlds. In this case, here. We are getting the name of the world that we gave it. In this case, empty, we are giving it. And that's the path to the PX4 folder. Uh, as you can see, there you go. Then let's have a look at the worlds that we have available. Mm. For that, let's go here. Let's go to tools, to Siddle Gazebo worlds, and we have all these worlds that use different models that are here stated. Okay, Bitbox, loads of stuff. Okay, you can create your own worlds, and probably we'll create our own maybe in the next video. I don't know. And we're going to select this Yosemite world. That, as you can see. It's very, very simple, absolutely simple. It's just a model. And then we are stating the values in, um, in the GPS so that we have realistic values for the drone. But in this case, this drone doesn't have at least operational the GPS and some data for the physics, that's it. Then what you have to do is launch. Let me relaunch it again. This is just for showing you how it's done. Uh, so we have this and here. We give it the launch and then the parent file. There's, there's an issue here which I'll have to correct, uh, but essentially this is the correct one. So you don't have to put ROS args, okay? That's for arguments. That's for giving parameters uh, in a different way. There we go. Once we have this message for the GT client, and we have our Josemite. Um, depending on 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 the system and the tier level that you are in uh, ROS DS, this go will could go very very slow, uh, just because if if you are in a free one, then it's a very big simulation. It's a huge world, and Gazebo doesn't manage very well uh, big worlds. So, but but you have it. So you have the drone that you hear in a 3D environment that it's a bit nicer than the one that we were using. And that's it. So I hope you like this uh, short video. Um, I'll try to go in depth like this in all the files and try to do in each video something different, change something. That way we'll learn how this structure works and we'll be able to do our own simulations using PX4 and other stuff, and uh, ground control. We'll, I'll try to go over all that. And that's it. Thanks, and see you in the next video. Peace.